So would you prefer to feed your cats natural proteins, proteins and prey that they were designed to eat? This is what your cat would eat in his natural environment. But these prey are not raised in their natural environment. So they don't eat a natural diet. They don't get exercise like they would outside. It's not the natural environment. Or would you rather feed proteins that your cat is not designed to eat, aka proteins that your cat would never hunt in his natural habitat, but those proteins or prey are raised in their natural environment? I struggled with this question a lot, and this is what prevented me from feeding whole prey for a really, really long time. So I would love to know which one you would prefer. Let me know in the comments. Now, the appeal of feeding whole prey is that it's natural prey, but it also includes the whole prey. And it's what Yahua gave our cats for food. And He's been pushing me to feed whole prey, but this question has been holding me back a lot. But I do have a study that we'll take a look at that proves what our cats should be eating based on what their feral counterpart cats are eating. And this study says, the present study provides insight into the nutritive as well as possible non-nutritive aspects of a natural diet of whole prey for cats and provides novel ways to further improve feline diets to increase health and longevity. And isn't that why we are all here? Hello, my friend, it is Jess and my boss, Jericho. We are blessed today with the wonderful sun, testing out filming in this location instead of by my computer. <laughs> but anyway, this is a question that I battled with a lot because I wanted to feed whole prey. I did feed whole prey in the past. And, but then, you know, I thought, okay, well, it's from a breeding facility. They aren't in their natural habitat. But then there's also, well, cats would never hunt a cow. Cats would never chase down a turkey. Like that's just way too big for a cat to eat. And as I mentioned, I do have a study, actually it's a compilation of 55 studies that shows the cat's natural diet. But first I wanna talk a little bit about Jericho's diet. So he's been eating raw since 2018. I adopted him in August of 2017. At this point, I was cat sitting and dog walking. So I had some personal experience and professional experience seeing the effects of diet. I thought, okay, well, it isn't just my cats growing up that had diabetes and kidney disease and obesity and all of these issues. The cats that I was visiting with at cat sitting job were also dealing with these issues. I had lots of clients where I gave fluids and I gave insulin injections, pills, liquid meds, you name it. I've done it. And I mean, some of these cats were on multiple prescription pills. And I noticed that a lot of the common themes were the food. I mean, these were different environments. You know, they were raised in the shelter. They were raised in the streets. They were raised from a breeder. There was multiple cat households, single cat households, you know, large houses, small apartments. Really, the only consistent theme was the food. So when I adopted Jericho, I knew, okay, I need to take control of his diet because I want to prevent these issues from happening, or at least try my best to prevent these issues from happening. So in August 2017, I adopted Jericho. He came from the streets. He was in foster care for, I think, since June, and then I adopted him in August, so about two months. And he came to me eating the big soup can of <laughs> wet, mushy pate. Thankfully, he wasn't eating dry food, but he was eating wet food, but, you know, of course, it wasn't the best wet food. And so I started looking at websites to see, like, what are the best cat foods? And then I'm looking at the ingredients and what they recommend, and I'm like, these still really aren't that great. So I was like, all right, I need to learn how to read labels myself. So studied AFCO's website <laughs> intensely and started reading labels, and then I realized that raw is the best way to go because that's the best way to eliminate all of the questionable ingredients and that's the best way to get good protein and good fat and just fresher ingredients in general. So I slowly upgraded Jericho's food from that food to a better quality wet food. Actually, that company doesn't make cat food anymore. And then I found a lightly cooked dehydrated cat food that I started feeding. I rehydrated it with water. And when I started introducing raw, it was funny, I would take the myoglobin from the raw and kind of drizzle it over <laughs> his little silver platter of dehydrated, well, rehydrated, dehydrated food. It was like a gourmet meal, and then I just put a little cube of raw on top, and of course he went for the raw first, and uh, 
you know, after that, he was like, I want more raw. So the raw food company that we were feeding was Radcat, and they had lots of protein variety. Not only was it really great and lots of whole food ingredients, but I could also get it at two different local pet food stores in my area or nearby. Uh, so it was great, and I loved it until the FDA forced a recall and that drove them out of business. Second cat food company that I've used that does not make cat food anymore. The next brand that I found, uh, you know, there weren't as many options at this point. It's 2018. So I took a few months after I adopted him to transition food. And yeah, so the next brand that I found, they only had two protein options and a long list of synthetic supplements. But I had no other choice. I mean, even now, There aren't as many options, but I mean, really back then there weren't, there were basically none. And that's what pushed me to do homemade really, because I was like, you know, I don't want to get stuck. I don't want to deal with unnecessary ingredients that I don't like. I wanted more control over Jericho's diet. And even when I started homemade, I did feed some whole prey because the place where I get the ground meat, bones, and organs and the supplements at the time in 2019 at this point they did also have whole prey. So I was feeding some of the whole prey and I even have videos, you know, showing Jericho eating a whole mouse and eating baby quail and chicks and little baby Ryan goslings, you know, gooselings, whatever. But then I kind of, I was ordering from a breeding facility and the quality kind of went down like the mice bag were full of poops and it was just smelled like urine and it was just really bad. So that kind of like, That's where the whole thing of like, well, it's not raised in their natural environment came about. And since then, I've found so many other breeding facility options. But it's just it's just interesting, you know, how we go along this path. And I kind of really battled a lot with this question of, okay, well, it's natural prey. They're not raised in their natural environment. But even if I'm feeding the best of the best raw, going to the farmer's market, et cetera, getting the ingredients, Technically, cats wouldn't be hunting down and chewing on chicken wings and chicken necks, and they wouldn't be hunting down a cow. They wouldn't be hunting down a lamb, like even a lamb, you know, that's way too big. Even a chicken. Baby chicks, yeah, if they come across some baby chicks, of course, but a chicken, you know, that's, they can't even eat all of the bones that's in a chicken. So, I, you know, I just, I've gotten many confirmations and many pushes. The other thing that's very interesting is that I've noticed that Unclean animals are the ones that these guys hunt. And we'll talk about that in the study. But it's, it's just, you know, I've, I've come a long way since 2018. Well, I guess 2017 when I adopted Jericho. Now it's the middle of 2024 and I'm transitioning Jericho, Jericho to whole prey. I'm really excited. Right now he's eating a couple different prey along with ground raw food that's already complete. I found that that was the easiest way to kind of mix the two instead of making homemade cat food and also divvying out whole prey. But I'm really loving whole prey. But let's get to this study. So Cambridge University Press, this is from 2011. They compiled 55 different studies of in different countries, 18 different countries, they collected the scat, the stomach contents, or the gut contents of feral free-roaming cats. Now, these are our cats, except they live outside. It's so we're not talking about jaguars, we're not talking about cougars, we're not talking about tigers. These are our cats. These little guys, these little feline friends that we take captive and keep as pets. These guys, except they are free free roaming feral cats or stray cats. So they took those contents and they took samples from each area to see what they're eating. What is their natural diet? What does it consist of? And what's the nutrient profile? So there are 18 different countries and it was, you know, Spain, Germany, U.S., uh, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. There were multiple studies within some of those locations, but it was a it was a nice span of <laughs> sample sizes. Jericho is always the star of the show. And the smallest sample size was eight, and the largest was two thousand five hundred and thirty-one from one area. But they collected a total of twelve thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine ninety-seven, excuse me, samples. Twelve thousand nine hundred and ninety-seven samples from these free-roaming cats. So that's a huge sample size across the different studies, and again, multiple countries. So we're going to get a really good idea of what our cats should be eating. 
So the mean for each dietary item, they broke it down into mammals, and that was 77.5. So that's the majority of what cats eat. And that's broken down further into rodents, which is rats, 19.1. Mice, 5.6, voles, 1.8, and other rodents, 5.4. Now, this is the mean across all of these areas. It depends on where the cats are. It could be more of one prey and less of the other prey. This is just the average of all of the data that they have. Rabbits, 41.5, insectivores, 0.4, other mammals, 3.7, birds, 16, Reptiles, amphibians, 3.7, invertebrates, 1.2, fish, 0.3, carrion, 1. Eggs was listed, but it, it was such a small amount that they didn't put a number to it. Same with plant matter. That's very interesting. So plant matter was so insignificant that they didn't bother planning on uh, putting that into the data. And a lot of us might be thinking, well, I'm sure there are people feeding these cats, and even if they are feeding cat food, like commercial cat food, it would still show up that they were eating beef and lamb and chicken and turkey, right? Because like that's the or like corn and wheat, aka plant matter, because that's what's in commercial cat food. But it says human linked foods was 0 0.1 and unidentified was 0 0.1. So let's say of all of this, 0.2% of the feral free roaming cats diet is not whole prey, basically. <laughs> and what's even more interesting is that they took the macronutrient composition. So the moisture ranged from 65 to 75%. So again, that shows we need a high moisture diet for our cats. But the protein with, th this is on a dry matter basis. So we remove the moisture, we're just looking at the protein. And that is 59 to 63%. That is really high compared to dry food and wet food. Raw food, you can get that high because you are using fresh ingredients. Fat ranges from nine to 31%. You know, since rabbit was very high, that's a very lean meat, so that's why the lowest is 9%. And then ash, which just means minerals, they get the name from, if you burn the food, what's left is the minerals, the ash. That's how they get that name. Ash equals minerals. That ranges from 4.8 to 15.2. That was another thing that they, they pointed out in this study is that the mineral content of the cat's natural diet is significantly higher than what these, you know, AFCO, FEDIAF, NRC recommend for the minimum allowance for cat food, which is very interesting. Nitrogen free extract, which is starches, ranges from zero to 12.9% but the average is 4.4 because a few prey have zero. And most of them were under six. So something interesting is, you know, with, with raw food diets, yes, the mineral composition is higher, but we need to pay attention to where those minerals are coming from because there's a big difference between synthetic, aka inorganic, aka man-made, aka isolated minerals, comparing that to natural minerals. So for example, phosphorus is something that everybody is worried about. Phosphorus is very high in meat, but naturally occurring phosphorus in meat also has potassium with it. And when you're eating, when the cats are eating whole prey, they also get calcium from the bones to make that calcium to phosphorus ratio proper. Then they also have the manganese and the magnesium. They have all of these different nutrients. Whereas if you're feeding a commercial diet that has an inorganic phosphate, that is the synthetic version of phosphorus, phosphate. There is a study among healthy adult cats where they fed them natural phosphorus and inorganic phosphorus. And over long periods of time, when given in excess, the synthetic phosphate does cause renal issues in cats, whereas the natural does not. So we can't just say, oh, high minerals is bad. We have to look at where are those minerals coming from? Is it natural sources or is it inorganic? Uh, unnatural sources because the inorganic minerals are far more, significantly more bioavailable than the natural counterparts. And that's what's shown in that study with the healthy adult cats who develop renal issues eating too much phosphate over long periods of time.
So what are we doing with all this information? Well, I personally am feeding whole prey now. I'm gradually transitioning Jericho to whole prey. I have been feeding homemade raw meaty bones for a little over a year, maybe a year and a half now at this point. Homemade since 2019, but that was ground meat, bones, and organs with a raw food supplement, supplement completer premix. And really what is... What's at, what's at stake here, what's important here is that cats need variety. So for example, in depending on the region, but cats still had a lot of variety. So rats, mice, foals, other rodents, they didn't specify what other rodents, but other rodents, rabbits, small birds. And so what I did is took, there was one sample from the US, over 600 samples just from this one study. And I basically took those percentages, and that's how I'm going to create Jericho's diet. Okay, how many mice? What percent of the diet is mice? Here's how much he eats per day. That's how many mice I'm going to feed. Same with rats. I got some hamsters, some day-old chicks, and I'm going to do some ground rabbit. Even though that specific study, they weren't eating rabbit from that California place in the U.S., but... I, I'm still going to feed a little bit of ground just because prey range in size, they range in weight. So just to be able to get the full day's worth of food, I'm going to add a little bit of ground there, but it's going to be go ground whole carcass. So it's really interesting to see the variety. It's interesting to see that the nutrient profiles are higher and that just shows us that cats do need variety. Cats do need nutrients and the best way to get those nutrients, whole prey. And uh, yeah, again, it's, it's the study that proves that whole prey is beneficial. The other thing that variety can help solve is picky eating because your cat gets used to eating the same thing and then you try to introduce something new and they're like, no, 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 I want my other things. <laughs> and the other thing I'll mention is like, you know, if you're feeding ground raw, there's no mental stimulation. And maybe some people say like, you know, I'm kind of uneasy about feeding whole bones, which is understandable. Well, whole prey is super small. I mean, one mouse is less than an ounce, weighs less than an ounce, unless you're getting like the extra large jumbo, like retired breeders. But even that, you know, those are like a little bit over an ounce. And they're basically the same size as chicken necks, maybe a little smaller. But the thing is, the entire thing, half of it isn't bone, whereas a chicken neck is like about half meat, half bone. But a mouse is about 10% bone. And then there's a lot of muscular tissue, all the organs, the meat, the tendons, the ligaments, etc. The bones are smaller and they're much softer. So it's much easier for the cat to chew. And again, it's natural. It's part of their natural diet. Now, if you're ready to feed whole prey and this sounds enticing to you, then the first thing that I would suggest is switching your cat to a commercially complete raw diet first. If you're feeding dry or canned processed food, it's just going to be much easier on you and on your cat because we can't expect our cats to know what a mouse is the first time they see it. Yes, it is their natural food and they might play with it, but we need them to recognize it as food. And we do that by gradually upgrading their food to a commercially complete raw diet. And if you need help with that, check out my Switch to Raw Blueprint video course. The link is in the description. That's going to help you ditch the processed food, feed commercially complete raw food. And then from there, you can start introducing whole prey. That's just easier, less overwhelming, less stressful for you and for your cat. And next week, I'll talk about how whole prey can benefit your cat. Thanks so much for watching.